What's up everybody, Gold Champ here. I'm gonna do a quick one on some Freon recovery. Quick shout out to Scrap Father and Son. They uh, requested this step-by-step -step on how I recover Freon. And so we're gonna go ahead and put one together here. Hopefully it's uh, what you're looking for. If you have any questions, of course, put them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. First thing is first, disclaimer, this is scrapyard recovery. This is not what you want to do to your air conditioner if you plan on using it again. Okay, I am punching straight into the copper lines because this is scrap metal. So that is your disclaimer. Do not go ruining your air conditioner because you watched this video. This is how to recover in a scrapyard to make sure you're getting the Freon, or refrigerant as it's properly called, and making sure the machine is empty so that you can fully scrap it out. That is what we are doing here today. This is not how you would do recovery if you were planning on replacing a machine, reusing the machine, putting the Freon back into the machine. So there's your disclaimer. Without any further ado, let's go through the setup here. And we're actually gonna find out, I actually don't know if these two have refrigerant in them, but the steps will be pretty much the same. So I have pulled all the screws already, just to save time on this video. That's the same thing you would do if you were scrapping a machine, empty, full, whatever. I have pulled the tops off, the motors off, and the uh, electric panel off the front of it so that we would have access to the inside because that's what we need. So you'll see down here, you could use these valves if you want to do the uh, soldering or brazing. You would braze this end shut so it's completely sealed because in order to use these, you have to take this cap off and use an Allen wrench or an Allen key and open this valve. This does nothing until that valve is open. And I want to bypass that step and this is scrap metal once again. So. I just punch in behind that valve. So, any of the copper line, and uh, again, this being a scrap yard, this side is already empty. The big fat guy up here, that side of the unit is already empty. All the Freon is gonna be from here to here in the coil and all the way up to this smaller valve. So just think the, the thinner copper line is the one that you want. This one down here. This guy is already empty. That's why I'm only punching into one side of the machine. So without belaboring that point any further, I will show you my setup with my machine. And we'll use the puncture valve to go straight in there. Let me put my gloves on real quickly. You want to use waterproof gloves because if this refrigerant does squirt out a little bit, which can happen, accidents happen, uh, it can give you frostbite. It can give you a nasty little burn. So you don't want to mess with that. So you got your tank, got your scale. This is a 50 pound tank, which uh, means that filling it up to 80% we can put 40 pounds in it. The tear weight is 27 pounds. So we can safely fill this up to 67 pounds, if that makes sense. You're only supposed to fill these 80% uh, full because the gases can expand uh, due to you know heat, uh, changing temperature, wherever it's stored or in the truck it's being transported on. So you only fill them to 80%. So a 50 pound tank, you put 40 pounds in it. Use a scale and do a little math. It's not hard to figure out. So we've got our machine, our pump. We've got our puncture valve going. And it's all fairly self-explanatory. It's going out of this machine, which we're going to use the valve to puncture, and in to this machine, it's going out of this machine and in to this tank. 
So it's pretty straightforward. You want it to go from there to there to there. So you just keep the gas moving in that direction. So we've already got everything hooked up and got the machine plugged in. It is set to recover. I'm gonna set it to closed. You can see there's a little bit of a glare there. There's the purge function for when you're done. There's the recover function and closed. So I have it closed right now. So we're gonna go ahead, and set this down real quick, grab my puncture valve or piercing valve, I believe is the way you're supposed to say it. And we're gonna get in on the thinner line here. Let's see, we got a good angle on that. Yeah, I think, I think we can see well enough. Trying to get a little closer, get a nice shot of that. And as you might be able to see, that line goes down there, up there, and into there. So anywhere along there is fine. We're going to go on the spot that's nice and easy to reach. The part right here, right in front of me. Because you need enough room to be able to open and close this bad boy. So we're going to make sure, not sure if you can see that, but that's basically a, a little needle. It's like a stainless steel needle with a rubber gasket around it to you know keep anything from leaking. And you're going to get it and just punch straight in through the line. So you want this to be open just enough to be able to get around the, the pipe that you're punching into, but you want it to be tight enough that it really presses that rubber gasket down around it as soon as you punch through it. Otherwise, it's going to be squirting out the sides, and you got to kind of adjust this. And with a, with a piercing valve, it's not easy or fun to adjust. You have to open it, tighten it, or loosen it, and then clamp it back down all while holding it on there so that the Freon's not shooting out all over you. So we're going to put it right up on here and just get a good look. And you just I, I just eyeball it. Turn the little bolt on the bottom until you've got the opening to where the bottom of this little uh, C-shaped part there and about half of the gasket are matching with the edges of the pipe. So, got that all set. Open it up. Get that C-shaped opening part. I'm sure there are names for these things. I don't know them and I don't care. That C-shaped part is firmly in place. And now I've got it right where I want it. I'm just putting light pressure on it. And then we're going to give it a, a nice hard squeeze because we want it to go straight in. You don't want to hesitate on this. You just want to get in there. Oh, you see, just like I said. That can happen. You have to put a lot of pressure on it to keep that from happening. And uh, so that was actually a great example. You can see how much pressure is on that. See how uh, tightly that rubber gasket is squeezed? I didn't have it tight enough, so a little bit was squirting out the back. That can happen. Again, accidents happen. But we've got that punched in. We've got our filter dryer on here. That just uh, filters out some of the liquids that can be coming through with the gas. You just want the Freon going through to our in and our out. And then you want these finger tight, but not super tight because that can damage the rubber gaskets or the little O-rings that are inside of these. And then of course you'll have leaking once again. So we're gonna open the machine up and, oh, look at that, not quite tight enough. So we're gonna tighten it up, finger tight. Good to go. And now, last thing to do before we're ready to start is open the tank. Until everything is exactly how I want it, I never open the tank. That's just one more thing that you're risking uh, opening and, and losing gas, having it blow out if you have it open before everything is ready. So everything is set up now. 
we've punched in. We're going into our machine, out of our machine, into our tank. Got our scale set up. We are set to recover. And now we just push start, st the start stop button to get it started. Another thing to know uh, is that this machine has a couple preset settings. It will, uh, as the factory setting it comes with, it, it goes to zero PSI. Uh, I pull mine all the way down to negative 20 PSI because zero was still leaving some in the machine. You would think it wouldn't, but it does. And even uh, minus 10, it still wasn't quite getting it perfectly. So let's go ahead and start it up. So you see this number on the left, I know it's a little loud, but that is the one that we want to get down to about negative 15, I've found. Once you hit there, you can usually stop it and it's, uh, and it's good to go. So, 41.35 pounds. We want to see that number climbing. There we go, 0.45. That's what lets us know that it's getting out of there and into there. So that's the entire process. And you'll watch to make sure that that number is still going up and that your gas is getting into your tank. But really, the more important number is this one, watching it until it gets down to negative 15. I mean, you can let it go all the way to negative 20. And this particular machine has an automatic shutoff at whatever you set it at. So it'll, it'll stop itself at negative 20 PSI. Or you can just come and check it yourself and uh, turn it off at negative 15 or below. That has worked for me every time. I've had no issues with uh, any refrigerant still being in the air conditioners. So that's how I do it. We're going to let this run for a little bit, and then we'll come check back in and uh, see what we got. Okay, it's been going about 15 minutes or so, maybe 20. I wasn't timing it. You can see we're down at negative 19. So this thing is actually going to shut itself off pretty soon once it hits negative 20 and stays there. It will do its automatic shutoff. So we will get our gloves again. Set you down while I put my gloves on. those waterproof gloves back on we're just waiting for this bad boy to hit and it should be good to go and we will purge the machine unhook everything and that will be that it will be finito if it ever gets there Well, I wanted to show you the automatic shutoff, but I don't know if I want to feel like uh, waiting forever. So, negative 19, good enough. Push stop. I'm going to close this first. And we're going to pop this off. And so, you might hear a little hiss when I take this off. It's at negative 19 PSI. And that means that it might actually suck air back into the air conditioner. So let's pop this off. Well, almost lost my gasket. That happens. You got to watch out for that. That little guy likes to fall off. And uh, let me tell you, they're hard to find. So I'm going to put it right here on my cart. And you heard that little hiss. That was negative 19 PSI sucking air back in through that hole. Only go in for a second. Nothing came out. This bad boy is empty. And we got, let's see, what were we at? 42, 41, I think it was 41.35. So we got like three or four pounds out of this, which is not bad at all. Three or four pounds. This is R22. Assuming that it was clean and somebody did not mix refrigerants in there, then that's like 40 bucks.
And that's 40 bucks while I was over here prepping these bad boys, which have already been recovered. I was snipping uh, valves off one side, getting ready to do my sawzall work. So it's nice. You get that machine going, and it's got its automatic shutoff. In case you forget about it, it'll, it'll just cut itself off. But now, real quickly, we'll go ahead and switch this over to self-purge. All right, so it's going to purge whatever's left in this machine into here. You got to make sure this stays open. You definitely don't want to take that off, or I'm sorry, close that off while you're purging, or this is just pushing it straight through the hose. You might burst a hose or something. So we push the start button once again. And it's purging, pushing it into the tank. And it also has an automatic shutoff, so we'll just let that go for a minute. You can see it was almost a half ounce that went up. It was at, uh, or I'm sorry, not a half ounce. I think it went up by 0.2, about a fifth of an ounce. So it is not much trapped in the machine. It will purge itself. Shut itself off, and then we will close the tank, and we are safe to disconnect at that point. Although I'm not actually going to disconnect because I am planning on recovering that machine, I just wanted to show you the steps. Be just about there. There we go. I'm gonna put it to closed. Quit that beeping. Just like a hose. Turn it righty tighty. Close it up. And I guess we can go ahead and disconnect too. Even uh, after all that, there can still be a small amount in here. Make sure that's all the way closed. And hear a little bit of hissing. We'll let that go ahead and hiss out. Make sure we don't have anything blowing up on us. And it is actually supposed to be stored on recovery. You're supposed to leave it open. Uh, it was explained to me why. I don't remember why. But it's for the safety of the machine so it doesn't end up uh, having any of its components damaged so you want to put it back to recover when you're putting it in storage that's that is an open valve this is essentially a valve you want it open and you want to take your hoses off to store it and you want to put these caps back on but loosely uh, not fully tight you want air to be able to move through it still again I don't remember why it was explained to me when I bought it and I actually talked to the manufacturer because I couldn't figure out how to change the setting to get it down to negative 20 but that's it this is all done except for that de minimis hiss a little bit left in there even after purging And then we're going to move, I'm actually going to put that back on and we're going to move over to this machine. But I hope that helped. Scrap Father and Son, this one's for you. Thanks for watching the channel. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you put them in the comments section.